What's up, everybody? This is Don Ward with Third Creative, thirdcreative.com. Welcome to the walkthrough tutorial video for On Paper, the newest multi sport template. Just hit thirdcreative.com. Excited about this one. There's a ton of options, and I'm going to walk you through the things that you need to know. Uh, help you get the most out of this template. Um, comes with the standard six files, including a memory mate. Um, before we jump in, there's a few things I want to touch on. Um, one being the font options. So let's jump over here. I've got this graphic set up. When I originally created this design, it was for a local basketball team, a high school team, and uh, I really liked a particular font, the one that you see in this middle column here. It's called Brightland, but uh, the thing about Brightland is that it does cost $17 for a commercial license. Um, so when I decided to turn this into a template, I spent a lot of time looking at free for commercial use fonts, and I found some, but none of them just seem to work as well with this template as Brightland did. So I'm trying something different. Uh, I'm including Brightland and suggesting Brightland. However, uh, I'm also including two altern alternate al alternative fonts. Yeah, uh, alternate options um, that are free for commercial use. Um, the good thing about Brightland is that you can access it um, free of charge for personal use. So you're welcome to start there, uh, see what it looks like, and then decide if you want to spend the additional $17. Um, if you decide that you don't want to go that route, I've included uh, this one on the left here. It's called Blue Sakura. It's very similar. And also this one on the right called Norwester, um, both of which are free for commercial use. And obviously, you're not limited to these three fonts. If there's a font that you uh, want to use that uh, isn't included, that's the great thing about templates. You can... You can take your own direction with it. Use whichever font that you like. A um, few other things about the fonts that I want to talk about. Um, one is how to access the Brightland font. Uh, the link that's included in the PDF will take you to the free for personal use version, which is at thefont.com. This is a, a website that I use for a lot of my fonts um, just because you can find free for commercial use. A ton of fonts here. It's a great site. Um, so if you want to start off with the free version, um, you will download that here. If you decide that you want to use the font commercially, you can come back here and use this link. And if you use this link here, it will take you to this website where you can purchase a commercial license. It will send you an email with a download link, um, and you'll be good to go. So it's a little different than uh, the norm, so I wanted to touch on that. One other thing that I want to touch on regarding fonts is a font that I use that I really like. recently found it called Red Wing. Red Wing is not um, found at defont.com, and it's not at any of the other traditional uh, free font websites that I like to use. But I really like it. It is free for commercial use, but it is available at the creator's website. So there's a link that will take you here. And uh, just to make it easy, you can come here and go to download link, go to download, or you can scroll all the way down. And right here, this talks about the usage rights and um, explains that it is free for commercial use. You will have to enter your name and your email address. And when you hit unlock, it will send you an email with your download link. Um, so it's a little different. I just wanted to explain that. Um, but let's let's jump into this thing. Uh, I'm going to use this vertical file for most of the demonstration. Um, same concepts. Uh, customizing this file will also apply to the horizontals and the memory mate. There is a few things about the horizontal and the memory mate that are different. So at the end. I'll pull those up and, and touch on those things. Um, I've got folders expanded. Let's get everything cleaned up. This is how it will open. So let's just start at the bottom. 
like uh, I like to do and just kind of walk you through everything. I like to strip everything down. This is very simple and self-explanatory, but this is where you will control the background color. Let's turn the paint strokes back on. That helps. So very simple. Double click here. Obviously, you're probably familiar with this, but if you're not, you kind of click through here and select the color that you're looking for. Something to keep in mind. Let's hit cancel. Let's turn this folder back on. I should have left that one on. This is your wrinkle paper texture. Something to keep in mind is the darker you go, the more you start to lose visibility of that texture. Now you may need it to be a dark color. In fact, I have sample images where I went with straight black and that's okay, but it may affect your decision on what color you choose for this area. But the same thing will apply to these little corner brush strokes. Either either those or the center portion, the darker you go, the more you will lose that. But that is how you will uh, control that, that portion there. The um, next folder up is the circle layers. We're gonna spend, we're gonna spend some time on this one because there's a lot to it. Um, I'll try to keep it as quick and simple as possible. But let's start off with this very first folder. This is a folder where you're going to find sport and pattern options to use. This is also where you will go if you decide you want to use your own graphic. So before we start to get into all of the options here, let's talk about using your own graphic. Um, so we're gonna pivot. Uh, this particular school has a logo or a mascot one of a few that they have. So I'm going to use this one for an example. And I am going to drag and drop it into the template. Now, you'll want to put it right here above this. I already have the sample logo in there, but there's a few more steps to the process that I want to explain. So we're going to look at this. The uh, file that they provided is kind of small in comparison to the resolution of this template file so you'll see it's pretty small. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the steps that I took to get it from looking like this to looking like this. So let's start off working with this layer here. Right click. Start off by converting it to a smart object. Once you convert it to a smart object we want to go ahead and open it. And To do that we're going to click on this little icon right here. So we've got it opened up. Now the first thing I want to do, which you may not have to do, I think I want to increase it. So we're going to go to image, image size, and you can see it's pretty small. Let's, let's just make that an 8, which makes it almost 8 by 8. Let's hit OK. Now, I'm going to close it and I'm going to save it so we can see. It's much bigger now. Now I don't mind clicking on the corner and expanding it a little bit. I just didn't want to expand it too much when it was so small to begin with. So we've got it expanded. So that may be perfect for you. That might be the look you're looking for. But what if you want it to look like this? How are we going to do that? So let's talk about that. We'll turn it back on. Let's open it back up. And basically what we want to do is we want to eliminate all of this background white area. And there are several ways that you can go about this. Um, the way that I am going to do it is to go up to select and I'm going to choose color range. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to click over here where I know it's white and you can kind of see the sample. Um, if this was all just two colors you might try clicking in here to get, if I can find it, oh there it was, to get the opposite, but then I would lose the H, if that makes sense. So by clicking on the black, it's only selecting the black. By clicking on the white, it's going to select all the white, it's going to create a selection around this. So you can play with the fuzziness and it's kind of hard to see in your sample image, but we can test it out. I'm going to put it at 100, and I'm going to hit OK. 
and you can see it's created a selection. Now if I add a layer mask, it will then mask out the selection. So there's a few things you can do. Um, if you see that, you can back up and come up here to select inverse and then add the layer mask. It works that way. Or if you back up and you did add the layer mask and it's backwards, just select this, make sure you have this layer mask selected. And on a Mac, I'm using Command I to invert, and it inverts the mask. And so now it's eliminate the background. Once you have it to your liking, just close this smart object out and be sure to hit save or you will lose everything. If you hit save, we're getting closer. So now we've eliminated that background. We can uh, make it as big as we want and position it. So now we want to make all of that white. And to do that, I'm going to double click on that layer and I'm going to add a color overlay. It's already set to white. Um, so you can see that's exactly uh, what we were looking for. So if that's how you want it to look, you can just go ahead and hit OK. But let's say you want it to be the opposite. Let's say you want this background area to be white and you want this to be red. If that's the case, we'll come back in here to this color overlay. Sample some of this red. That might be a little dark. Let's go right there, hit OK. So now you can't see at all because it's red on red, but that's okay. This very first blue layer here is a solid circle. If you turn that on, it'll give you a background, and you can control the color that you want right here. Double click. It's already set to white. If you need something different for some reason, you can do that. That looks atrocious, so we'll turn that off. Um, but anyways, hopefully you get the idea. I kind of rushed through that. But, um, you know, as many sports specific and pattern options that I've put into this template, having the ability to add your own logo or your own graphic is a really big deal, you know, I think, because it allows you to really customize the image to the school, to the team that you're working with. And I probably think that's pretty cool. So uh, I just want everyone to understand, you know, how to how to work that, how to pull that off. So if, um, if there's anything that I rushed through too quickly or that you're still not sure about, shoot me a message, shoot me an email, and uh, I always try to get back to you as quick as I can, and I'll help, help you with it. But let's, uh, let's keep it moving. Um, let's see. So this was the sample image. All right, so the very first one is the solid circle, and uh, there may be... Uh, a few instances that you would want to use it, but primarily it's if you're going to use your own graphic or your own logo. So let's turn that off. And let's just walk through these. Um, it's pretty cool. I've, I've never done anything with archery, but I get, I don't know, a few requests here and there. So I thought, why not? Created this uh, bullseye uh, slash bow and arrow graphic. Um, so you can see that this is white. And obviously, you, if you click in here in this box, you can change that to something. But one cool thing is that if you select the mask of any of these, you can get the opposite look or opposite effect. You can invert it or transpose it. So uh, on my Mac, I know it's, uh, what is it, Command, maybe Control on uh, Windows, uh, Command I to invert the mask. Again, make sure you have the mask selected. And you see you get the opposite look. So I thought that was pretty cool. And you can do that on any of these. So we'll switch it back. And we'll just kind of look at all of these. We've got baseball. Baseball inverted. We've got this basketball option. And you can invert that as well. Invert it back. We've got another basketball option. And that's what it looks like inverted. We have bowling. And 
see. Next, we have a chevron pattern. Chevron inverted. Let's see what else we have. We've got a couple soccer options. We've got the solid soccer ball. It will invert there. You get the idea. This soccer ball. We've got football. So this is a little different. You know, football is in a round ball. So I was trying to figure out ways to put a football in there. And just really wasn't working. So I had the idea of what about the yard lines or something that represents the yard lines. And so this is what I came up with. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. And again, this is something you can invert to get the opposite look. Um, and again, right here in these boxes where you can change the colors. We'll cancel out of that. Let's just look at the last one's golf. Uh, we've got lines. And let's say you don't want them to be diagonal. Click on this corner here with your move tool. And you can rotate this thing however you want it to show. And that goes with any of these. And let's see, next we have tennis. Got a softball option. And this is what I came up with for swim. It's kind of a pattern, but to me it represents water. Let's see. We've got two volleyball options. We've got this one, we've got this one. And we've got a wrestling option. So those are the ones that are included quite a bit. Let's turn basketball back on. All right, so once you've got that part squared away, um, next thing is the inner stroke outline. So let's zoom in, see what we're looking at. So you got a stroke outline here and a stroke outline here and it's controlled by these two uh, blue layers here. So working with this one, if you double click on the stroke outline, and you can see we've got two of them here. Here's the white one, here's the gray one. Click on that box, same thing. You can change it to whatever color you want it to be. We'll hit cancel. Once you've got that, just come down to the other one and repeat that process. Now you can change the size here if you want them bigger or smaller. If you really want to get into those details. But the same thing will apply to this one here. You can see I can turn those off. It's the outer one. Same concept. Here we have the uh, repeating text layer. So that's what we have right here. Now with this I recommend doing it this way, which is to double click on this T to get everything highlighted. And let's say we're starting from scratch. I'm going to type the same thing, but I'm going to type holiday eagle basket ball. I personally like doing a space, a dash. And another space. Now, once you have that, go ahead and select all of that, including the extra space here, if you can see that. And we're going to copy it. And then we're going to come back right here. Now you can right click paste. I'm going to hit uh, Command V. And I'm going to keep doing it until it fills up the area. Now, you can see we're starting to run out of room down here. I can hit it again, it just won't show all of it and it will change you know how this appears. So now this is kind of offset. So I'm gonna undo that one and that way this one is kind of even up here. Uh, your subject is gonna cover this portion right here so you're not gonna see that anyways. 
Um, if you want to fine tune the way this is lined up, you can select it using your move tool. Click on this uh, little corner here. Now sometimes when you click on it, it might expand it or transform it just a tiny bit. So if you hit edit, undo, it will shift back to its original state. It's very important that you do that because if you don't and you make it a little bit bigger and you slide it up a little bit, everything gets off centered. So if you rotate it, it won't look right. But you can just click and drag and line it up exactly how you want it if you want to fine tune it you know in that much detail so we'll get out of that and that is how you control or edit the uh, repeating circular text layer to change the color if you have your character panel you can come up here otherwise double click come up here and click and you can select the color that you want pretty easy all right, so now we have the player name ring, and that is this outer ring that has all of these dots, and then it has your player name. So this is pretty important part as well, because, and I'll show you, if you double click, these dots are actually a font. I believe it's called circle things. It's listed in the PDF, so you'll have it downloaded these dots are actually created using the letter A. So if I delete them and then I hit the letter A, it will start to fill them back in. If I do a different letter, it's going to give me a different, different shape. So you'll want to use the letter A. Now, pretend I didn't do that. Let's double click here and let's say we're going to change the player's name but it's going to be longer than the, the name that's already in there um, so we'll say Michael uh, Belcher uh oh now where'd my dots go so I'm going to hit backspace until my dots come back so that's all that it had room for. So if you select oh, a handful of these dots and delete them, we're going to make a little more space. Now I'm going to finish typing Michael Belcher. Now it fits, and we need more dots to fill in the remaining space. So I'll put my cursor anywhere in these dots and just hit the letter A until it's full. Now you can see that there's a little less space between the M and this dot than the R and this dot. Depends on how detailed you want to get, but if you want to even that out, the way I do that is I make sure I have my character panel. If you don't have your character panel, come up here to Window and uh, put a check mark next to Character. Um, I use the heck out of this thing. Um, so, what I'll do is highlight the last letter in the name, and I'll come over here to the kerneling, you'll see this uh, VA. This basically controls the distance between characters. So you only want to select this last letter. And I'm going to kind of click and drag. Oh, it's real sensitive. So I'm going to drag to the left into the negative numbers. And it's going to start to move over. Once you get it how you like it, hit the check mark to commit it. You got it. Again, you can rotate this thing to fine tune it even more. Now that's up to you if you want to get into that much detail. We'll go ahead and come out of that. Um, what did we not cover? Oh, if you want to change colors. I have a co different color. I have a color for the, the name. So if you just select the name only, come up here, you can control the color. If you want to control the color of the dots, you'll just highlight the dots only. For some reason on this one, I wonder if I start right here. It's hard for me to 
get that last one selected. So what I've been doing is just selecting all of these and I will make them the color that I want and put my cursor here, move it over, get rid of it, and then hit the letter A. Oh, did it gray again. You can move your cursor back in here. Hit the letter A and uh, there you go. You were able to change the color of the dots. Let's not commit that. All right. Thought that was like that was a little lengthy, but uh, that was the the best way that I was able to achieve this look that I wanted with these uh, circular dot path along with the text. Um, it's the same concept with this next four layers. I actually built in senior, junior, sophomore, freshman. I mean, you can change it to say something else, uh, varsity or uh, their position or really anything. Um, but the same concepts apply to that as well that we just explained. Um, but if you do want just senior or junior, you can just turn on the one that you need. Hopefully that will save some time and work for some of you and way down here we have outer dot ring so you can see this darker one um, if you double click you can control the color same thing um, also if you want to get this detailed if you double click and you have all of it um, highlighted or selected you can control the space between them. You can control the size using the font size. Um, you can control how far away from the inner circle they are using uh, this right here. Set the 40, bring it out, you can bring it in. We won't commit to any of that. But that's how that works. All right, let's keep it going. Goodness, that was a lot. Um, but just like everything else, if, if you're still struggling on something, just hit me up. Uh, we've got paint strokes. Um, if you open it up, you can control the color of each paint stroke individually. So if you decide you want to make them different colors, you will just come to uh, the color overlay option and select your color. And I think most of the time you probably will want to control them all together the same. And if that's the case, you'll just turn this color overlay on and control it from there, from the primary folder. Pretty easy, pretty simple. There you go. And then again, keep in mind the darker you go, the more you will lose that uh, paper texture. Um, Got the wrinkle texture. You can uh, go in there and play with the opacities if you want to. Otherwise, probably just going to leave that alone. Got our subject image. Let's turn that back on. Um, it has a built-in gradient mask. Um, if you decide that you want or need to change that, um, sometimes you might end up, I mean, this is something you want to avoid. But for example, let's say he had white uh, uniform. And then you have white, you know, uh, team name text. They're going to blend. So you want to create contrast. But, um, you know, if there's something that's distracting you and you want to adjust this layer mask, if you don't already know with this layer mask selected, come to this gradient tool here. Make sure that it's set to black to white. Black uh, conceals and white reveals. And what I do is I'll click somewhere, holding down shift to keep it straight. Click and drag up and let go. And that was very, very subtle. You can see a drastic example. We'll undo both of those. So that's how you would adjust that. You can fine tune it if you want to by selecting a very well, soft, uh, round brush like zero hardness 
bring the opacity way down. There we go. And you can kind of paint out using black. I would be hiding or white. You can paint in anything if you wanted to fine tune it like that. But more than likely, the uh, existing. There we go. The existing uh, one will work just fine for you. Um, this is where you will drop your subject images and you'll size them up pretty standard. Um, last folder is lower text. Let's take a look. All right, so you've got your different text options. So we'll turn this one off. Here you can see with the uh, Norwester font. And it's very simple how you change the colors. And this one is the Blue Sakura. Uh, Blue Sakura also looks pretty good if you do a capital and then lowercase. Uh, looks like that's way too close together. Let's come up here to kerneling and set that to zero. There you go. And that's another thing you can, um, when you type in your team name, if you see too much space between a certain letter, highlight that letter and adjust it. You can make that a little closer. Just another way to fine tune. Or if you have two letters that are too close, you can go the opposite direction. Uh, that is an option. And then, of course, the Brightland um, font that I suggest. Let's see. Last we have sport and year. It's all one. So if I change this to I would want to, oh goodness, let's just start over there. There we go. I'd want to highlight just the sport name, and let's say I was changing this to volleyball. Once you do that, it may not line up just right. Also, I may want that to be a different color, so just highlight the sport, and then change it to the color that you want it to be. And then the same thing can apply to the year if you want that to be different. You just highlight the portion that you want to control the color to, and you can do that. But once you have it how you want it, we'll commit it. Now we just need to come down to this rectangle with our move tool. I'm just going to use my arrow key. You can zoom in. Use your arrow key. Get it lined up. And that way it looks good. Um, you can control the color of this as well. It's a color overlay. Very simple. So if I wanted to go with the gray, I can do that. And that is it. This is, um, well, let me turn the team name back on. This is a paper texture, so you can see if we zoom in. If you turn that off, you'll lose that. So... The opacity on that is set to 70. You can bring it up if you want it a little more, a little bolder. But that is that is it for the vertical file. The only other thing is to touch on uh, a few things with the horizontal file, and then we'll finish up with the memory mate, and we'll call it a wrap. So let's go ahead and look. At the horizontal file. All right, so here we have the horizontal file, and everything is almost exactly the same. The one thing that I would want to touch on is. Um, Subject image, it has a gradient mask. You may want to play with that or fine tune that, um, kind of like I demonstrated when we were working with the um, with the uh, vertical individual. You can use your brush, white or black, and kind of paint in or paint out however you want it. Um, but this one's more important. I added a layer mask to these circle layers. If I, if I turn that layer mask off, you can see 
which in this case it doesn't look too bad, but if your players are kind of fading out into transparency and it's showing the circle behind it, it may not be a look that you want. So if the layer mask that's already in there isn't how you want it, then you can right click and delete the layer mask and can add a new one. And there's a few ways that you could go about this, but probably just use the black brush. I'm going to bring it up opacity up to 100 and we won't make it quite as soft. And I'm going to use my left bracket key to make my brush size a little smaller. And you can just kind of paint away anything that looks weird or you don't want to show through their legs or you know it's not all gonna look just just right or like it should I'm get rid of that one anyways you get the idea that's what that is for and that is how you can fine-tune it to your team image now once you're done with your team image save this as a JPEG obviously but that JPEG is what you will use for the memory mate so speaking of the memory mate let's jump into that just make sure everybody knows how to use that one all right so here we have the memory mate it's pretty self-explanatory you can drop your subject image into this uh, top folder here you see it's got a built-in drop shadow just adds a little depth if you turn that off you can see the difference you can adjust that if you want to um, in this folder it says place 4x5 team image here see video well this is the video so um, it has a built-in stroke outline so you see this white you can turn that off um, it has a drop shadow which you can turn off or adjust if you want to I kinda like the way it looks here you can change the stroke color by double clicking and clicking in here change the stroke color to anything you like you can change the size um, but in this folder if you open it up and let's see if you have we will go ahead and remove that and let's pretend you know that we've customized this and the last step is that we need to add our our team folder so let's go ahead and do that and yeah it would be this one so I'm just going to drag and drop this right in here into this folder and I'm going to scale it down and I'm going to size and position it however I think it looks good maybe something like that hit the check mark and it looks like it went right above this folder so I need to drag it down and drop it in there once you do that you'll have your stroke outline and your drop shadow and that's it that's all there is to uh, creating that memory mate super easy alright that was a long one but uh, hopefully I've covered everything and if I didn't like I've said couple times already shoot me a message shoot me an email and I will get back to you as quickly as I can um, I had a lot of fun with this one I hope you do too and as always I hope it makes you a ton of cash and uh, keeps your clients happy and that's all I've got so until next time see ya